Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at how to make wires and pipes in Maya and a couple of techniques that I like to use to do this. Um, now Maya is not the easiest program to do uh, such things as wires and pipes in uh, compared to for example Max. Uh, in, in fact it's so easy to do it and so convenient to do it in 3ds Max that I often advise people just to do it in 3ds Max if you know your way around the application. But in a pinch, if you want to do it in Maya, then this is the, the best way I've found to do that. So first of all, we'll look at doing these wires. So what we want to do is grab our curves tool. So if we go here and select the EP curve, we can draw our wire out. So we just click where we want. This should create a, like a, a Bezier curve. Bezier, however you say it. Okay. Uh, now... At this stage, it's best to spend as much time as you can getting the shape right because once we we make a um, an actual wire out of this, it's going to be a lot harder to manipulate it uh, without any distortion. So if you know that this wire is going to be over something, if it's going to be wrapped around several other wires, then just keep it as an EP curve for now. Um, if you want it wrapped around other stuff, say for example this pipe here, if you want them wrapped and coiled around there, then just keep it as an EP curve as well. There's no real reason to finalize the model until you're happy with the placement of it. So uh, just to manipulate this after you've done it, if I just grab this wire again, if we right click and go to control vertex, then we can drag and select these different control points. And if you drag and select multiple of them and then hit rotate, we can rotate the entire wire as well. It makes it a little bit easy, a bit easier to position it. And I'm just gonna grab these here and move them up a little bit. Okay, so say we're happy with the shape of this uh, curve now. So I'm just going to grab hold of this and uh, what we're going to do is go up to generate and then go down to curve utilities and in curve utilities we're going to click on attach brush to curves. Now you can just about see here it's attached uh, some geometry to this curve. So the settings for this is they're a little bit all over the place but basically what we want to do is go to brush here and in global scale at the top I'm going to type in 80 make it nice and thick. And you can see now we have a, a, a quite a low amount of geometry, so we can start increasing this. So here we've got in mesh, we've got tube sections. If I drag this up, it creates the uh, radial sections of the mesh. Uh, so I probably want about 10 here. I'm only kind of looking at the silhouette. You really want to keep this low. In fact, probably if I was doing quite a lot of wires, I'd keep this at something like 6 if it was a small wire, maybe 8 if it was a bit of a thicker wire, because... Um, Stuff like this can obviously really increase your poly counts and your scenes quite fast. Uh, and also, if you can't actually see the end of it, so where it will be intersecting something, then you can't really see the um, faceted nature of this in the polygon. So if I just select off it, um, you might be able to see the facets going this way, but the radial facets, well, they're not really visible at all. So if I select this again, and uh, okay, I'm happy with eight. So the next thing I want to do is go back to stroke shape and in sample density, I want to just slide this up. We can see the um, density of the length of this wire increases. And I'm not really looking at the straight sections because that is okay as is. What I'm looking at is anything that has a sharp curve in it. Obviously, you're going to be able to see the sharp edges of those polygons. So I just want to increase this until I'm relatively happy with that curve. And I think that will be just about fine. And then what we can do if, if some of the straight X sections have too many in that are really not needed, we can come back afterwards and reduce these manually. So next, um, this is still uh, just a curve at this point. Uh, you need to convert this to geometry. So do that, keep it selected, and go to Modify, go down to Convert, and find uh, Paint Effects to Polygons. Now we want to click on the little control box next to this. And once this appears, um, normally quad output is unticked if you've not used it before. So just make sure it's ticked or else you'll get triangles. And click Convert. So it looks like nothing's happened, but it is actually ha converted to an object. Um, now we want to just right click that object, assign existing material, and put a Lambert on it. Because it uh, naturally comes out black. And then we can go into this and start reducing some of these edges that are unneeded for the silhouette. So to remove an edge and the vertexes at the same time, hold con control and backspace. So that will leave your mesh um, clean without any vertexes left behind. So back to edges again. I'm just going to remove a couple more of these. So actually, just them ones will do on this one. And if we have a look at that, we can see that's a nice soft curve and you can't really see any edges on that. 
And the, uh, the, the bonus feature of doing it this way is that if we then go to uh, poly modeling and go to our UV uh, editor, it is actually unwrapped this really neatly for us. So we can select this and scale it down and you can place that on your UV tile. Or if you have a, say if you make a rope or some sort of pattern texture that tiles, uh, full size texture, what you can do is just line up one section of this with that tile and it will, uh, and it's fine to go off the edge of the map as long as that texture that you've got lined up with it repeats endlessly. Now this saves obviously a lot of texture space because you'll get a much higher resolution pattern on your wire and uh, it'll cost a lot less because it will just tile repeatedly. Okay, so the next thing we wanna have a look at is how to do pipes. So these can be tricky um, and there's different ways of doing it. You can do it with an EP curve, but it's hard to get these straight sections. And usually that's what you want. You want multiple straight sections in a pipe. So what we're gonna do is first of all, go to our um, cylinder and drag a cylinder out here. And I'm just gonna reduce the amount of sections on this. So uh, editor, poly cylinder, and I'm just gonna take this down to 12. And then I'm gonna rotate this so it's easy to work with on the grid. Let's snap that down to the grid. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna to do to prepare this is go to faces, select all the faces, and then deselect the interior ones, and then delete those end caps. Right, so now I've got this. What I wanna do is, now you might wanna do this against one of your modular pieces if there's a specific pattern that you want these this pipe to be in, but I'm just gonna select this pipe and I'm gonna duplicate it, and then I'm gonna move it across here and rotate it in 90 degrees. And then I'm just gonna place it where I want the next straight section. So. The distance away I'm placing it from the first piece is simply I'm imagining what the curve is going to be like. So I want enough space on the ins inside to produce a nice gradual curve and enough space on the outside as well to produce a curve. So I'm just eyeballing this and placing it where I want. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to rotate it again in 90 degrees. And then Again, I'm just eyeballing that to see where I want that curve to be. So actually I want it a bit lower. Okay, and then I am actually gonna reduce the size of this piece. So all you're doing is scattering your pipe about and just the straight sections. So all you're concentrating is those straight sections. So I'll duplicate this again. This time I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees. And again, I'm imagining that curve there. Okay, so you go around like that, adding your big and small pipes and you can even reduce the size. So at this point, if I was to go um, duplicate this and put it here, and then reduce the scale as well, and then maybe rotate it in the 90 to 90 degrees, horizontal, put it there. So then we wanna select all the pipes that we play, place, and we wanna combine them. And then once they're combined, we wanna to go to edge mode, and double click two edges of the pipe that you want to join, right click and bridge. Now in the bridge um, settings, we want to change the curve type to blend, and then we want to change the divisions to um, be an amount that, basically what you're looking for is that curve to be not too faceted, and we want the inside to not be too dense either, we don't want it really uh, close, you know, and we've got to just be sensible about the amount. Uh, basically, I'm looking for even spacing of these, um, of these polygons, these quads here. We don't, I don't want ones that are too stretched or too tight. Just a nice even amount should normally get us a nice curve. So that, that looks like it'll do there. Um, and then again, so shift, right click, bridge, blend, and turn the divisions up. This one's a little bit tight in the corner here because I placed it a little bit too close. So I can undo that. Select this face and just move it down a little bit. Maybe select this edge here, move it out a little bit, and then select them again and bridge, blend, divisions. Okay, that looks okay. And if you're getting something that's picked, that seems to be getting a bit tight, um, you can also go to this and just nudge it over a little bit. Uh, or if you're not satisfied with that, you can weld them together. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. They don't have to be separate loops. It's not like this kind of stuff is gonna be animated. So I could go merge vertices, merge to center, merge vertices, merge to center, merge to center, and then grab that edge and neaten the placement, you know, and that's fine as well. 
So now these edges, right click bridge, blend, and set the divisions. Again, I'm just going to tweak these edges here. This time I'm going to target weld. Just get that nice soft transition. And obviously do it to the other side as well. I'm just doing it to the top side in this case. And then the final piece and bridge, blend and set the divisions and we get a nice soft blend into a smaller piece of tube in there and um, also don't forget uh, with this stuff like this we want to go to select it, go to mesh display and soften those edges to get that nice round soft look um, and also at this point don't be afraid of putting some incidental details in here so if I had a couple of loops here and then go to faces, select, double click, select, double click, double click, select and double click. And then extrude those. And really fast we have some nice um, mechanical kind of pipe work there, some cast iron pipe work. And you can see we can even make some nicer in, uh, interesting details like the, the changing of the size of the coupling here. And um, wrapping white, there's no reason to not wrap wires around there as well. Um, if you're making something a bit more dystopian, I like to wrap wires and stuff around the bigger pipes, um, like like metal wire, like someone had once secured some parts of machinery to this at some point and whatnot. Just think about that, think of outside the box when it's coming towards um, incidental details and kind of human damage or history of a piece. And uh, yeah, that's it, pretty simple and we'll very quickly add a lot of detail to your scene.